Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Try Soul Zero Mars Colonization. In this series I'm going to be trying out some of the games I haven't played much in my Steam library. Uh, basically I've played this game for about an hour so far, so you see here Gusev Crater has a population of 8 astronauts and colonists. And so my goal is to further explore this game and other games that have a sci science or sci-fi theme. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try and explore, let's see, you can actually download new maps from uh, from the Steam Workshop. Uh, Hellas Planitia seems like a interesting name for a place. Landing Ellipse Generator is sort of general. I think, but Planum Boreum, ooh, Polar, okay, let's go Polar. Let's try to make a Polar Sediment. Now, I don't have much experience, but at least I've got the basics down. And I've had help on stream, uh, during live stream playing this, so I've got some tips. Looks like this location doesn't have any gypsum or clay. Maybe that won't give us uh, a good selection of things to do. Meridian Meridiani Planum. It doesn't have much water. Well, let's see one thing or another. Let's go with this and see w how gypsum and clay might limit us when we don't have it. I'm going to set meteorite impacts and dust storms to normal. So far that hasn't uh, really hurt things, but uh, you never know. Okay, so here we have a launcher, and this can carry one ton to the surface of Mars. Uh, I don't know how it figures total weight. Uh, I, I sure hope they don't think the total weight is like the whole thing is six tons, but anyway. Uh, max allowable weight 7,000, so you get the difference as 1,000 tons. Here it suggests that uh, we send rovers and um, methane extractor and some supplies first, and only later on, much later on, do we actually send the astronauts. So we get a launch window every 120 souls. I have no idea what kind of launch window that is, because Earth to Mars launch windows don't occur that quickly. But, all right, let us uh, buy into that. Uh, just pretend that 120 souls is actually the two-year launch window that normally occurs or something on that sort. So I'm going to put on a methane extractor because, as I found out thanks to the live streams, uh, that's how you refuel the vehicles and get them off the surface again so that they don't clutter up the place. Otherwise, you're going to have these pods sitting all over the place. And I'm going to put a small rover in, and then I'm going to put supplies, let's say uh, four supplies, and then the rest is food and water. There we go. Now at the colony, we have a capacity of 400 uh, kilograms of food and 400 liters of water. So there's no point trying to send too much at once. Here we go, let's launch. I have no idea what kind of rocket this is. It looks like some sort of cross between a Delta IV and SLS, but uh, it does not have that kind of capacity, so go figure. So here we go. That's an interesting transfer, too. I, I, I don't know how that works. Uh, well, I guess I'm mostly going this way. I guess that does work. Ooh, wow, that looks... this is a dangerous map, isn't it? I think I might have picked a very difficult map to try and feature on this video. Um, so I'm trying to find a landing spot. Sounds very windy or something. Uh, well, let's not clutter up the place. The more out in the open... Well, this looks like a good place to build a base, but we don't know where the resources are. Maybe I'll tuck this pod... Well, then the... Well, yeah, let me just tuck this pod here. We'll plan to build the base down here where there's room. So here we have the pod. And we seem to have ready some spare fuel. But we'll get that extractor out. So it's going to help fuel it up. It just apparently sucks in air and drills for a little bit of water to get that. But our main deal is the little rover. And I'm going to set to explore and I'm going to give it a route. And if we look here, it's going to find resources, hopefully. Well, it's discovered ore. And ice. Okay, so we can time warp. 
only 2x though and we're waiting for the next launch window Well, that looks like a place to get some water. That's kind of con convenient. Wow, look at all that. Of course, you'd expect that there'd be a lot of ice around here, but... Zoom into the rover. Red, I guess, is ore. We don't want to build anything on top of resources, otherwise we won't be able to extract them properly. Okay, getting close to the next launch window. Now, of course, you could do all this in in Kernel Space Program and ooh, boil off. And actually, I sort of encourage people to try that. Actually, uh, we should have little methane extractors and sort of uh, uh, sort of duplicate this in Kernel Space Pro Program would be kind of fun and uh, build all the components and such. Anyway, we definitely need a methane extractor so that we can get off the ground again. Otherwise, I don't think I need another rover. Just gonna send more supplies. I guess uh, we'll max out the capacity at Mars with this launch. After that, we won't be able... I mean, until somebody starts consuming the food and water, we're not gonna be able to bring too much more. Okay, I guess we'll be a little bit short there. Okay, let's launch. Sort of a low impact game altogether. I mean, uh, could sort of it's the Mars colonization equivalent of Minesweeper almost, at least as far as I'm concerned. Could play it as uh, while well, you're just having a break in between something else. It's not very intense. We will need a forklift to deal with the supplies and get them off of those spacecraft. I have forgotten that once and I actually launched the little lander off of Mars without taking the supplies back. Okay, let's see our resource map. Well, water there is, ore there is, and we weren't expecting any gypsum or clay. We are hoping for some additional methane though. We haven't found that. Okay, one of our spacecraft has finished refueling, but again, we need to bring the supplies off before launching it. I'm a little bit worried about the lack of methane so far. Okay, we've discovered methane. It doesn't show up here yet. Hopefully we'll discover a nice big patch of it. Oh, okay. First signs here. Okay, so sort of a methane deposit in this little little corner here. So build a base here. We've got ore, water, and then methane down here. You can sort of see how the layout is going to be. Okay, let's launch. Methane extractor as usual. Uh, we just need 20 more food and water. Uh, let's put the forklift on. Forklift is going to help us move the supplies around. Um, hmm. I guess we'll skip the food and water this time. All right, forklift, methane extractor, and four crates. Because we definitely want to use all of our launch capacity. We don't want to leave it 20 kilograms short or anything like that. The forklift can't really move the supplies anywhere until we can build a place for them for it to put them. And for that we need an astronaut. So this is uh, all we can do there. There are supplies sitting in there. That one's been refueled. Okay, there's some ore uh, methane down here as well. Oh no! A dust devil wreaks havoc in the colony. Uh, okay, well, there goes my record of not having any natural dust, really. This this is a very undusty place. This is not a 
And I like how a, a weather report dust devil imminent. It seemed to pop out of nowhere just to destroy my rover. That wasn't very nice of it. Don't worry though, uh, these are not the only sort of delivery devices we'll have. Once our colony grows, we can use a much, and we build a launch pad, we can send much larger spacecraft. But those have to be refueled with methane deposits uh, like those, instead of just using the methane extractor. Okay, so one methane extractor, one astronaut. We don't want to overdo it. We can do with 20 more food and water, but that'll hit our capacity. I have learned. And we want a rover as well. Good thing astronauts don't weigh much, and apparently, uh, well, I guess uh, the food for the astronaut is included in the 6,000 kilograms that is already the total weight, but that begs the question, why... Why do we have that weight when the astronaut's not there? Let's not ask too many questions. Clearly there are some holes in this whole business. Alright, let's go with this. So there are a lot of Mars colonization games. And I don't have all of them, but uh, I do have a few of them, and I may get others, and just sort of compare and contrast. They all have their own little mechanics. Obviously, they all should take care of the certain same sort of business, but uh, they might handle differently, some better than others. I mean, one of the things that irritated me about... Uh, take on Mars is that they, they don't even bother with the whole launch thing and it doesn't seem to matter how huge your payloads are concerning your cost or how much you get paid for the mission or and you can do things immediately this at least you know you have launch windows even though they're not quite the real launch windows alright I'm going to build a pallet which is where the, um, the forklift will take the supplies. And the supplies are necessary to build the buildings. Okay, so I'm going to automate the forklift. So it will empty supplies. Okay, now I'm going to build a cryo tank to get water from here. Now let's make the, the closer one first. There we go. Okay, the astronaut basically builds the foundation and the forklift does the rest, as you can see. So now I'm going to build a... I think I'll build a straight hall first. Here, of course, putting the pallet so far away from where I intend to build a base is a little bit unfortunate, but it helps in that I'll have room. Not enough power. Oh yeah, solar panels. We need solar panels. Uh-oh. Quick, build solar panels. We'll put those off to the side as well. Um, let's see where the resources are, are so that we don't uh, build solar panels on top of them. Unfortunately, we can only task the astronaut to do one thing at a time. So, yeah. Now, it's a female astronaut. Okay. Uh, oxygen generator seems like an important thing. It's tab to rotate the things around, by the way. Note that the, the astronaut is consuming two food and two water every day. So we really need to get on with that greenhouse. wonder what happened to the noisy background. I guess whatever storms were occurring have passed. Or maybe we're not out in the middle of nowhere, I don't know. Okay. Build greenhouse. There we go. Maybe that's not the best place for a greenhouse, but I guess we'll we'll have another extension curving around there.
So you have to open up the airways. And if you open up this one, it'll all go all vacuum on you, so you can't do that. Okay. Once, uh, and even if I open it right now, that won't be a good thing. We have to wait until the greenhouse is built. There we go. Now we open up that airway. And eventually the greenhouse will be operational. Still low oxygen right now. There we go. Now we've got stable food production. You can already see there's a lot of tasks going on here. Uh, there's still the supplies there. This one is empty of supplies. Let's launch this one off. I want to do that before bringing the new one in so I have a space to land it. This one doesn't seem to have any more supplies so we can launch that one off. This I want to have explore and its root. We'll take it around here first. Okay. Alright, now let's launch some more stuff. I don't know about... I'm gonna make sure we have the resources for the next uh, astronaut before sending another one. Let's make sure to send a lot of supplies. Maybe a little bit of extra food. Without the supplies we can't build anything. Got that methane extractor. I think that takes care of it. Uh, let's fill up and launch. Yes. Astronaut sure don't do stuff on their own. Not really big on individual incentive, I suppose. Let's build a more, another pallet. Okay. And... In fact, another pallet so that we never have the forklift not doing any work. Okay, and solar panels. So solar panels are going to be a big business around here. They get dirty, they have to be cleaned, and there's a lot of... Until we can generate electri electricity some other way. Which there are different ways. You can see all these buildings. We can't do a geothermal plant just yet, but that would be something to do. Um, we have to complete a terraforming project to unlock some of this other stuff. There's a terraforming project that requires 20 supplies here. Monument, radar, anyway, uh, advanced warning for meteorite impacts, geology lab, biology lab. Yep, very complicated stuff. Now we have that background sound. I wonder what that comes from. What's that sound? Uh oh, uh oh. Why do the dust devils always go after my rovers? Oh, and that... Oh. Well, we can launch that off. It's been refueled. Hmm. This is going to be a dangerous place with all the dust devils around. What are we gonna do if one of those attacks our settlement? It's gonna be bad times. Oh, okay, so these have a capacity of a hundred... I mean, a thousand each. That's good. So I guess our total capacity is like, is it just 2,000 or 2,400? Because normally we had a, well it looks like just 2,000. Well we're gonna have to bring some more colonists, just to maintain stuff. Copy. See it says population is too low to support the colony, our colony is already too big. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll be able to do that soon enough. We'll send another astronaut. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Probably not. Okay, let's launch this away. They do count it in Mars years, and one soul is one Mars day. So 25 hours, I suppose. Okay, methane extractor. Another astronaut. Looks like a uh, food situation we find for two astronauts so far. Yep. Um, maybe we'll pack in another rover and lots of supplies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sort of tempted to have a second forklift. Maybe on the next round.
We have the foods. Let's have the rover explore. Seems stable enough. Let's build a habitat for, you know, more colonists. Um, so I feel like uh, the greenhouses might be over here. Base, do you read me? Gotta do some planning here. Be one of those. Where's the other guy? Build another four-way one. No, uh, well, maybe. Now, how many supplies do I have? That's the thing. I really, it really should have a display about how many supplies we have. We can sort of visually see it on the pallets there, but still. Don't know what ores for yet. Haven't actually used ore. Okay, now you build a launch pad. Uh, okay, that's gonna get in the way of that. Well, let's just gotta interfere with some water resources there, but I guess that's all right. Let's have the launch pad sort of sticking out there. Yeah, so see, the solar panels have gotten a bit dusty. It really should be snowy or something, whatever the white stuff is. Astronaut does automatically clean them up. I didn't tell the astronaut to do that. They were just free. So now we have a launch pad. We can have civilian colonists, not astronauts. I guess the difference is that they don't do EVAs. Okay, this one's clear of everything. Let's launch that one away. This one's still refueling. Okay, maybe we need an oxygen generator on this side. No supplies? Uh-oh. Okay, let's launch. We need lots of supplies and a few colonists. So now we have this new rocket available. That's more legitimately um, SLS sort of thing. It carries 2,000 tons to... Uh, 2,000 pounds... Uh, sorry. 2,000 kilograms, 2 tons to the surface of Mars. Um, so we can load up some colonists. They come in batches of four. Sets, if you will. Families, maybe. I don't know about the mineral extractor yet. Or, uh, this, this knocks rocks away, but we haven't had too much of a rock problem. Maybe another forklift would be a good idea, but let's focus on supplies. Oh, uh, this doesn't have a methane extractor because it lands at the launch pad, and it has to be refueled by a methane extract, uh, another methane, well, I'll show you once we get there. Okay, maybe one more forklift to hasten things, but yeah, we can't really load more food, water, and oxygen, so another forklift. I guess we'll put a token amount of extra food. Okay, let's launch. Those things on the side definitely don't look like they're boosters that actually separate. Wow, they're unloading colonists before it even sits down. These are some some excited colonists, clearly. Okay, so this has some fuel left, but it requires more to launch. Uh, careful colony planning has resulted in zero deaths. I think this is the first time I've gotten that message. <laughs> Which tells you a lot, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got a spare forklift. Okay, spacecraft refueling complete. But not that one. That's that one over there. Well, we'll launch that away. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me build some extra solar panels. Uh, our our new colonists will take probably take more power. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any airflow going into that greenhouse. Yep. Yeah, low oxygen. Let's get another greenhouse. And we'll need that methane thing. Hmm. Ah, crowd tank methane. Right. And we need to build that in a methane deposit. Let's build it at the closer one first. And 
and that seems better. Okay, we've got one methane tank. That has a capacity of a thousand liters. We need a thousand four hundred liters to fuel that up, so we need another one. There's an astronaut just standing around there. So, no, uh, don't destroy anything. Build. Not a cryo tank. There. Now I need to uh, extend the base. Right now it's really tight. Obviously, we need some hallways to extend Four. things out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is it? It's one of them dust devils. Stay away, dust devil. Stay away. Not the launch pad. Don't take out the launch pad, please. That costs a lot to build. Want to upgrade? Hold on. Oh, 20 kilograms ore and 20 clay to upgrade the hallway. Hmm. Maybe the armor. And then maybe it will be able to withstand the, the dust devils. Ah, uh, well, we, we won't be able to gain clay from here, though. So that's not an option for us. That's a shame. So we've hit the first thing that seems to need some of the resources that we don't have. I don't know how big we have to grow in order to warrant getting more peoples. I guess we'd have to build another habitat thing. And I will launch. Uh, we, we just need to launch some supplies, I think. So we can't lift th that off, so we can't uh, send one more of those. We, we, we can only send one of these. So, uh, just get as many supplies, and looks like, uh, oh, uh, and the methane extractor to get it off the ground. Yeah, 14 supplies, food is balanced over there. Alright, let's do this thing. So, this is how you go, and of course, you would want to do some actual planning if you are gonna try and build a colony that has like more than a hundred people and I guess that's possible and then there's this terraforming thing which I haven't gotten to uh, which is probably a totally different level let's see what else uh, let, let's see what we can practically get to building the geothermal plant it doesn't look like we can build It's a significant upgrade from our solar panels, but I can't build it yet. Allows the colony to mine the Martian surface, so that's a refinery. Recycling center. Recycling center is important. That, uh, that helps the cryo tanks. But then again, we don't really, strictly speaking, need one, but I guess it's probably, you know, efficiency and all that. Let's build one of those. I mean, our water situation is great right now. Of course, we're living on ice. Habitat. Maybe I should tuck it in here, or maybe uh, a horizontal hallway might be good here. Or maybe I should make that one lower and build the habitat here. Yeah, I'll build the habitat here. Well, we have capacity for two more, but not four more, and the colonists come in batches of four, huh? Got enough methane. I think we've got enough water, so can we... Yeah, we can refuel this. Let's launch this away. Yay, now we can bring one more of those. So in theory, we can have 12 peoples. I don't know why it only says eight. Beds, eight. Oh no, not 14. Okay, good. Copy. So now we can send uh, another load of colonists, but we don't have the food production for them. Alright, big one. I. Uh, well, we don't have enough food for more colonists. Let's definitely send up to the capacity of our food. 
If I send four more colonists, it's gonna be a dire situation pretty darn quickly. I could send two more astronauts. Maybe I should send two more astronauts. Colonists don't weigh as much, though. Maybe two astronauts and four colonists? That could be dangerous. We'd have to really get to work real quick. Well, let's be adventurous. Maybe, maybe some of this other stuff, like a mineral extractor. Okay, we shall be bold. Let me just load up on food. Alright, unloading colonists. But let's unload the astronauts. And we immediately need to start building our new greenhouses. For that I want a four-way hallway here. I want to build a straight hallway here. Hello? Okay, and I want to build another four-way hallway down here. And I want to build oxygen generators, obviously. Can't grow food. Copy. Mm. They're not uh, taking my orders as well as they used to. And then let's build some greenhouses. I'm gonna build a greenhouse there. Copy. I'm going to build a greenhouse there. to build solar panels because we're negative on the electric charge right now this is a massive project expanding for 12 people now and our food is in dire situation People may die if these astronauts can't get together. Alright. Uh, we're out of food. Oh well, no, we're out of food. Please build some more food. A colonist has died from starvation. No. No, it's not a good idea. Ah. Oh. We've got food production here. No. There goes my perfect record. Copy. Hey, hey, don't kill all of them. It should be balanced now. I don't know why it's negative anymore. Now it's not as growing, but darn it wasn't, they didn't consume, because it was like negative one just now and now it's three. There was a point where it should have just been one. I don't buy that, that was not right. One of them shouldn't have died. Well, anyway, our, uh, our ploy, our effort failed. And we better build some more solar panels quickly. Well, with the death of my colonists, well, l l let me boost it to at least my record colony. I mean, the last one I had eight. I'll, I'll get beyond eight and make it stable and all. And then I'll uh, call it quits for this, uh, this trial of Soul Zero Mars colonization. A fire has consumed an oxygen generator. Okay, repair that thing. Well, we don't have any more supplies, so just, um, 
Yeah, I guess we'll just hold on. That hasn't finished refueling yet. This this we can uh, we can refuel, and well, hold on. Yeah, yeah, we can refuel and launch. Okay, let's just full up on supplies. Oh, wrong one. Funny how we can only carry 20 crates of supplies on that one when that's a max on the small one too. You'd think we could carry more in this thing, but apparently not. Alright, um, I feel like sending some more food. Let's just send 270, should round it out. And, well, let's try again. Four more colonists. We certainly have enough astronauts running around. And we do have room for water, so we might as well send that too. Okay. Well, population shouldn't be too low to support the colony now. Okay. Well, we're gonna be down one unit of food. There we go. Funny, I thought I bought enough, brought enough food to fill things up a bit, but... Okay, well, we seem to be stable. Let's make sure we have some margin, though. I didn't really want to build this here. I'd actually wanted to build a straight hall here and some stuff branching off, but maybe I'll curve around using that one. Still can't build a geothermal plant. Maybe a uh, it's probably the geology lab that would help. Here, why don't I put a geology lab at the bottom of this one? And a farm would be nice, but we need a bi biology lab. So we'll put a biology lab up there. Alright, we've got that there. Let's build a biology lab up here. I don't know if that's a good place to build it. I've never built a bi biology lab before. Copy. Uh, and sometimes things don't happen. Oh, no supplies, that's why. Okay, well, we'll have to send more supplies. Can we lift this off? Yep. Okay, so I'll be getting my supplies here with this launch. But I think I'll uh, call an episode at this point. So, thank you for watching my presentation of Soul Zero Mars Colonization. I'll be playing this every now and again, probably during streams while waiting for Kerbal to load. Uh, I've been doing that. It's actually while the 64-bit uh, KSP installs I have are loading and loading a lot of mods so it takes a long time. I've been playing this in the middle and then uh, when Kerbal finally loads I go back to it saving the program here. So I'm going to save this game. Uh, I don't know actually if I can save game in this screen. So let me just go ahead and do a launch and then I'll save game in the next, next screen. I think it automatically saves game maybe. Anyway, so yeah, but anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.